last video, I told you how expensive adjustable rear seats are and why I started thinking about how can I just might as well just do it myself. And then I walked you through this plan. So in case you didn't remember, all I needed is just to move my rear sets a little bit kind of forward so that my, my shifter goes down since I'm doing reverse shifting. And these are the two prototypes that I was thinking about, just kind of mimicking the same adjustable setup you see everywhere by either using a slot or maybe different holes where you can position your rear sets in multiple ways. So I went ahead and purchased some sheet metal, knowing this is not the thickness I was looking for, but maybe I thought, okay, I can maybe just um, sandwich the two plates together just to make it you know, a little bit more sturdy. And I started just cutting and then, you know, little by little, just kind of giving the form using my template that I had already, you know, made when I, when I was working on the bike. So with the template outside, I started just cutting kind of in little by little, just kind of making it look just like the one I just pulled out of the bike. I think we can both agree this is not necessarily just looking perfect or or something like you can expect when you purchase or buy something at 600 bucks uh, but you know it's, it's gonna get there i'm just gonna i'm thinking i'm just gonna paint it i'm just gonna make the holes and i'm just gonna make it look you know the best i can and this is when i decided that in order to make this piece like something that's super rigid and su super sturdy i was going to be welding a piece in the middle before i sandwich two of the same plates so that you know i have a, a piece that is a little bit more thicker and can withstand the weight the weight of my body Since now I, I'm going to be having a, a gap in on the outside because I have a piece in the middle that's actually creating a separation between the two plates, that's when I decided that I was going to be cutting a strip of um, sheet metal in order to make it give it give it the shape of the same uh, plate, and that way I was just going to be welding that around, and then I was just going to grind it and just make it look perfect. Okay, you can probably now get the idea. So the metal metal strip that I um, cut from my sheet metal. I'm actually going to weld it around the part and that's how I'm just gonna make it sturdy and I'm just gonna make it a part that's enclosed with you know keeping everything on the inside and kind of making a surrounding around the part. But then something happened. My dad, which is my subscriber, an amazing guy, he called me and said, hey, I just stumbled upon something that you might wanna take a look at. And I'm like, oh, no worries, I'm, I'm okay. Cause I already have my part all together. I mean, I mean, I'm just in the process of welding it and then it's a matter of just painting the part and we should be good to go. So he insisted and sent me a screenshot and some links to something he saw on Amazon and I'm like all right cool I'll take a look at it I'm like uh, what is this this actually looks pretty good so I'm like I'm still a skeptical but you know what let's just give it a try so what you're looking at it's some what they call 2020 aluminum and this is actually uh, used for you know metal pieces on like window frames just to keep them together that's why they have the holes they have in the in the angle there so to my surprise they are actually very sturdy so what I started doing is I started putting them on top of my original template and matching the holes and I said you know what maybe I can just use them independently and maybe I can join them later so at this point I just started to modifying the uh, the plate just to you know accept the the holes and the different you know bolt size that I have so at this point I'm just you know kind of making the holes bigger and bigger and I'm actually gonna start to you know put them on the bike and see how they feel you can see this top portion already matches the holes that I had in the pack in the in the previous part so now I'm just gonna introduce the one at the bottom and see how I can make it work and at this point I'm only using two plates but my plan is to make them kind of like a sandwich and I mean um, eventually just so I can make them even more stronger and I don't have to really deal with you know any flex or or anything like that so this is the first test as you can see I mean it looks pretty good I'm actually getting the angle there's a little bit of fine tuning that I have to do because you know because the way the holes are fitting right now but this is just you know the first time I'm actually playing with it and I can see definitely you know potential with this option and now with all of the bolts tight you can actually see what I mean what we're working with in here and that to be quite honest, doesn't look doesn't look bad. I mean, it's a little bit dirty because I'm you know all over the place kind of playing with it. It doesn't have the right angle right now, but essentially, even with one plate, it feels pretty sturdy. So I mean, it doesn't feel like it actually can withstand the weight of my body. So I'm just gonna give it a try. So I'm not sure if you realized it, but when I was hitting the, the shift, I was actually hitting the side stand and that's not good. So, and that's why I'm back to the drawing board and trying to understand how much I have to 
run, I mean, eat from this area right here, just so I can ain't let the, the actual rear set move forward a little bit more. So I create some space between, you know, the operation of the shifter and the side stand. So now that I have the correct angle and I'm, my, I'm able to shift or engage all the shift without issues with, you know, touching the side stand or anything like that, I'm matching the other set of plates so that I can make what I told you about, the, that sandwich plate between the two. So there's going to be two plates at the top and then two plates at the bottom. So this is the last rendition. At this point, I managed to get both plates on, on the top and the bottom just to add a little bit of more you know, rigidity and make sure that this is gonna be, you know, as sturdy as possible. It, maybe if you noticed, I am overlapping um, the, the plates. So I have these plates on top of the ones at the bottom. There's nothing um, actually keeping them both together. So um, I might be just maybe drilling uh, maybe a hole. That way I can just in, uh, ensure that they're both are just gonna react as a single unit. And um, you might be able to tell that I have here a knot that was just to create some separation and then I have a couple washers in here and I also have a washer here and a couple washers at the bottom of this um, bolt and the idea is just to understand how much spacing I needed in order to be able to clear the side stand and I'm not interfering with the you know, operation of the shifter. So at this point I managed to get a pretty decent uh, downshift offshift without any issues any intervention so it lo it's working perfectly. So I'm actually going to take the measure measurements and I'm going to be replacing these nuts and as well as these washer for a more permanent solution is going to be, I don't know, um, somewhere around a piece of metal that it goes in here acting as a spacer instead of just using, you know, just a you know, random knot or anything like that. So right, let me just work on it. Right, so this is it i mean now you have the bolt in the middle and then you know you have the right angle the one angle i was looking for just to keep no stress on my leg when i'm on first for example and i can easily just reach you know six uh, without any issues without feeling my foot is actually going all the way down so this was a great idea so thank you dad for you know sharing that with me and and bringing me to this uh upper i mean this solution so at the end of the day, what did we learn? So in a second, I'm actually going to do a little bit of a um, hard pull on the bike just so you can see if there's any flex, you can see, you know, how it's behaving. But so far, so good. It's, I mean, I'm able to engage all my shift. I have the right position of my left foot, which is exactly what I was looking for. But this is what I want to tell you. Do you have to do this modification? No, you don't have to. This is something that I did because I like to tinker with my bike and I like to experiment with things. And I'm also not willing to pay 600 bucks for some rear sets. I'm not saying that the people selling these rear sets are overcharging. I, I completely respect the fact that there's you know development and research in, in order to you know make a part work. And so I, I respect that, but I'm just saying maybe there's an option like this one with for less than 20 bucks you can actually get something decent um, that's not adding a lot of weight to the bike but still performs the way you would be expecting. So Thank you a lot for watching this video. You can stay a small second so you can see how I take the shift and you can see, you know, a little bit of a, of a harder shift that I did in order to kind of put a little bit of more stress on it. And it's actually passing with flying colors. So thank you a lot for watching the video. Don't, don't forget to subscribe. Feel free to tell me what you would like to do in the future with this bike.